Um, aside from that, uh, yeah, I was up north. We watched all of the, uh, the Nightmare on Elm Street I thought series. you were down south. Down south north in the Adirondacks. Um, that we is watched south. All the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. Unfortunately, Little V uh, and his girlfriend had to leave uh, like just as we got there, so I didn't get to stick around for that. But um, Nightmare on Elm Street, I've never watched all of them all in a row. It's a weird series where they know which are the good ones, and they say which ones are the good ones. Wait, what? What do you mean they say? So um, Nightmare on Elm Street 1, made by Wes Craven, directed by Good. Yeah. Nightmare on Elm Street 2, directed by Nobody. Uh-huh. Very weird sequel. Wes Craven comes back for Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors, yeah. with Lawrence Fishburne yeah. in there, and Patricia Arquette. It's awesome. Yeah. It's Wait. probably the best one. Wow, I didn't Nightmare know. Elm Street was he, 4. Was he credited as Larry Fishburne back Yes, then? he was, actually. Yeah. Nightmare on Elm Street 4, 5, and 6, all shit. Yeah. The only good thing about Nightmare on Elm Street 6, Freddy's Dead, is there's a video game sequence where Freddy's controlling like... A, oh, a, I've seen that. Yeah. yeah, so that one's really, really bad. And on the extras on that Blu-ray, they have extras where people shit on the movie. They talk to the producer at the movie studios like, we ran out of ideas and this was the worst one. <laughs> and he's in his office and he has Freddy merch behind him. And they talk to other people and they're like, yeah... Uh, by part six, you start running out of ideas, and here you go. Um, <laughs> then, like four years after that one, uh, Wes Craven's New Nightmare is the only other good one. So out of seven movies, there's three that are... are what uh, a classic horror series! In that last one, they say the main girl that's the protagonist of this says, well, I only starred in Nightmares 1 and, two, uh, one and 3, and everyone knows, like, those were the best ones because Wes Craven's new nightmare is was two years before Wes Craven made scream. And that's what he was going for where it's like, it's about people making a new nightmare on Elm street movie, but Freddie becomes real. Robert <laughs> England, the, the, the actor behind Freddie is in the movie, just signing autographs and, and the mm. woman that starred in one and three is, is like, I'm having nightmares of Freddie. That's weird. And the meta is that Wes Craven and New Line Cinema have been making this mo these movies to keep the demon in check. That's good. As long as you make a movie, That's he's good. locked in. So that but explains the bad ones. They haven't made them. They said, we just shit out a bunch of movies to keep the demon locked in. That's but now, good. since it's been four years since we made the last one, the, the real demon is getting <sighs> stronger. That's really good. And keep the Spider-Man demon in check. Imagine shit out of bunch a, of movies. A canon explanation that's as to why this solid. shit got that's, bad. That's super good. Solid. Very solid. Because this is another one that Wes Craven directed and wrote. So that's again when I when I I'll put the demon in check as long as I write I have a it. Dumb question. Yes. Do horror movies make money? Horror movies make all the money. Yeah. Because the cost is low, but the gain is high. Yep. And. There's like, uh there are Do they make money in theaters? Yeah. Uh or is it Okay, on VOD like just digitally, there's a whole, there's ten, it's it's like the Switch eShop or Steam. There's 40 movies released a week. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because you will get so you you're going to spend like 5 million dollars max and then maybe even less than that. But like enough people will buy that you're like we didn't lose. So I have a really good example uh, for Wooly on this. And uh, thanks, Red Letter Media, for... They've actually explained this at length in multiple videos. Yeah. So there are some producers out there, some movie men, who will basically buy your piece of shit pitch for 500000 to a million bucks, and you get to make a movie with it, as long as they own everything with that pitch. This then inundates, like, the, the market with just... Tons of fucking shitty horror movies like Annabelle and uh, d d all the all that fucking garbage. But one of them was Paranormal Activity, and Paranormal Activity made a shit zillion dollars. Do you know how much? And so did two, and so did three. Do you know and how so much did four. the original Paranormal Activity was made for? A hundred yeah. thousand. Yeah, dollars. no, I remember it was a crazy. The, the thing, guy yeah. that directed and did all that, he made all of the money. So is it like then because the movie the movie making business as a whole is entirely a gamble where 
you make a you make ninety nine clunkers so that the hundredth pays off. That's right. No, so, not not even those ninety nine clunkers. They might be clunkers in quality, but they always honestly it's make the, back it's their the money. kind of business model the games business could use more of. Yes, C and D tier games just somehow making money. Oh, but, this but, one this one blew up. Wow. But, yeah. were, but were you going to say that like the paranormal paranormal, paranormal activity is made like. If probably like a billion dollars yeah, by now. Yeah, right. So, and they made like what six or seven of them. So, how, how many of those have they so, made? Matt? So, for example, yeah, uh, uh, at least five. Because um, I feel as uh, I guess I feel like um, I hear about the occasion. Like when I hear about in terms of like big successes, I hear about them occasionally. Mm-hmm. But a lot of the time, and not not just because of like yeah, like uh, you and Leanna with the the dumpster diving on Netflix, but like. In general, I feel like I don't hear a lot about the mid-range junk a lot of the time, and like you like you say shit like Annabelle. I'm like, oh yeah, I remember seeing a trailer for that. There are three time. of those movies, right? Um, but like Paranormal Activity and and uh, Wreck and Get I, Out. I think there are two Strangers movies are like yeah, these they're... huge, huge things. So yeah, I'm just I'm just wondering. I'm like, do, is it a genre that makes money? It's a it's a it's the Matt, it makes so much money. Matt yeah, okay. nailed it. So, it's, it's so, you make them for so fucking cheap. Okay. So Halloween, the new Halloween that I talked about the other week, just passed two hundred million dollars domestically. Will probably finish its theater run, uh, not domestically, worldwide. Will probably get two hundred fifty million. Any guesses on how much it cost? Less than a quarter of that. Ten million. Yeah. yeah. That that's so much profit. Ma- like Marvel movies don't make that. Like the mid range Marvel movie doesn't that's, make that much profit. Because they're fa- they're fancy CG. Because they, they they they're like two hundred million dollars or whatever. And it the, is. and the trick is really obvious. Don't have a big CG monster. Don't have a big practical effects monster. Have the villain be a guy. Guy in a boiler the guy, suit. The guy wears a mask. Cool. Where is it set? In a loca- in a location that you can just drive to. Mm. So, Willie, I doubt you have this in the in the docket, but that's fine. That's the last horror thing I want to say is that with all the legalese surrounding Friday the Thirteenth, someone is desperate to. <laughs> I love this shit. I want to make it. LeBron James what? is what? producing a Friday the Thirteenth reboot slash remake but he can only do it with the amount of stuff that that writer owns so lebron james will be making base and Borges. oh weird no wait no he'll be making pamela Voorhees because that's what the writer owns oh fuck that that because uh, yeah. mm. lebron weird. james i did not know is a huge horror mark he dressed as pennywise last year prefer, and was horrified i prefer base and i've never I'll be heard honest. any any whiff of a hint of a fart about him being a big fan yeah no not until now where i'm like why is he producing i'm like well he moved to an, to the to la yeah not to play for the lakers and he, but to be in movies and he made he made that I promise school and now he's, he's making a uh, Space Jam two for fuck's yeah, sake yeah and he's doing right. the barber the shop greatest show horror and... movie of all time yeah. okay so he's just getting into media and he loves he's horror becoming, movies becoming and wants to produce a Friday man. the Thirteenth thing but now Blumhouse which is like the ultimate success story of like we're just making whatever and oh that hit that hit that hit oh shit now we're mega stars and now we're making this Halloween thing they're like we tried to get the rights for Jason they're like no that it's too complicated. We tried. We were trying to get the rights to whatever. Oh, let's get Halloween. And now they they're like three hundred million dollars in profit, or they will be, or whatever. I saw it's a story. Crazy. I saw a story this weekend that was like uh, tickets to a Cleveland game were uh, at a high of two dollars for for scalped tickets because that's how bad it got. Hot. Yeah. And then there's a picture of the locker room and like. <laughs> They took the place where his his corner was, yeah. and they turned it into a towel closet. Wow. So they didn't even replace it with any one spot. They just made it a towel closet. So whatever, it's like, nothing happened. He's making here. a new Friday the Thirteenth. I'm fine with that. Anyway, pretty nice. Um, <laughs> Willie, if you want to like ditch this YouTube business, we should go into making horror movies. Oh That's yeah, where the it's money lo- lucrative, is. It's big a lot lucrative. More lucrative. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, no, the um, the money's in producing horror movies, not yes. in not in actually making them. Yeah, no, no, hire other people to produce them uh, to make them for you. 